Hello, Nella. Uh, this, this is Patter Jones from K25 Group. Uh, this is regarding your uh, interview setup on the Azure Architect role. Hi, so, Patter. You know, yeah. Hey, hi, Nella. How are you? I am good. What about you? Yeah, I'm doing good. Absolutely doing good. Thanks for asking. So, uh, before before you know before we uh, go ahead, uh, you know if you can turn on your camera and you know give me a little bit background of yourself. You know, and your roles and responsibility, what you do with your current organization. Uh, sure, sure. One second, I will turn on my camera. Yep, yeah, sure. So, are you able to see me? Uh, not yet. Yes, I can see it now. Yeah, okay. So, is it proper? Yeah, please. So, what? tell me about yourself, about, you know, about a little bit of your background, you know, about yeah. your experience, you know, and how long you've been working with Azure, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, what you do on your day to day activity you know of, of with your current organization sure so my name is nalla so i i have total 15 years of experience in it i started my career with desktop engineering and then i worked as an ad architect okay and then i worked for multiple technologies com vmware and throughout the, my journey and in 2017 i got a chance to work on azure okay and from that my Azure journey started. I uh, in 2017 ending I joined Wapro Infotech. The name suggests they use us very well. So basically, uh, there I used to implement and uh, architect Azure solutions. Uh, there I have done multiple projects. Okay, on Azure, uh, on migration, network related stuff, and uh, uh, ASM to ARM migration, creating scripts, creating automation scripts and uh, things. Uh, migrating on-premise resources to Azure, uh, creating web apps, SQL, and everything day-to-day uh, -day related task. And I also handle technical escalations for our uh, projects. This was my short introduction. Actually. Okay, thanks, thanks, Nilla. So I see you have, you know, I, I see your resume with me. I see you have large, uh, you know, or, or you can say vast experience on different different technologies, but okay. this role is specifically with Azure. So I'll not go ahead with the like other technology we have worked with previously on SSCM, okay. you know, Citrix or the VMware that you said. So this role okay. specifically for the Azure. So we will going to talk about mainly on the Azure things. So what you have did, you know, from the last three to four years on the Azure related stuff. <clears throat> so. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about some, you know, the technical things about the Azure. <clears throat> so have you done any migration on the Azure, yeah. like moving the server server or any any VM from the local infrastructure to the cloud, specifically yes, yes. the Azure? Yeah, I have done that. Yeah, if you can just tell me about, you know, the, uh, the process or, you know, how you have designed and what is the approach you have taken to migrate the resources from the on-premise of the cloud and which of the platform you know <clears throat> you have used do you have used any tools to migrate that and how you have migrated overall and how you have planned okay. that short okay. so basically to start with we were uh, we have got a project for 20 server migrating from on-premise to azure uh, it was our first first project so uh, there were all all these 20 servers were part of vmware infrastructure and uh, VMware infrastructure was around 5.0. So what we did first step, so first step was to create a project in Azure. So we created uh, Azure migration project in Azure through Azure Migrate, okay? So where we got an EXE, okay? So for that EXE, we have installed one of, one on one of the uh, VMware, uh, VMware uh, server. So once we installed that uh, EXE on VMware server, it's act as a process server. So that step is done. So how we plan for migration? So from out of 20 servers, first we uh, thought out uh, how many servers are part of pre-production and how many servers are part of production. Okay, so we segregated that, and after segregating that, we prioritize the uh, severity type. For example, if the server is single or it has in cluster, or if the server has a high priority or 24 by 7 application, in that way we prioritize uh, the uh, servers. Okay. So to start with, we started with the least server. Okay. So once we have a process server installed and everything done, we have installed agent on our uh, migrating server, and then we started our journey. Okay. And the the process comes with connection and proxy related stuff, and there are a lot lot more into it. 
but I have explained you in the short. So once we migrated, uh, once we replicated our on-premise uh, first server to Azure, then we tried the test migration. Once we did the test migration and we found everything is working fine, just the IP change and the uh, public IP was also changed. So we created a DNS record for that public IP. And then next forward, we go gone ahead with other servers, uh, first pre-prod and then uh, go ahead with prod and in prod also first standalone servers and then uh, other servers. So this okay. was our step-by-step -step journey to cloud. Okay, okay so, fine. And so there was no assessment done because they just want to lift and shift. Okay, so we have not done yes. any assessment. Got it, got it. So as I said, like, you know, you have not done the assessment just because you have only 20 servers. So yeah. let's say example, you have to migrate more than 200 or 300 servers. So you have got a big project where you have the big number yeah. of servers, like more than 300. So right. how you will perform the assessment and how you will make sure the server are, you know, functioning, functioning properly once you move those servers from the Azure environment. And also yeah. at the same time, you have to look for the, you know, the cost optimizations as well. Yeah. So so uh, basically before uh, going to a cost optimization, first we will go ahead with the migration part. I, I take care of cost optimization as the second part. So we, uh, so first for 300 servers, the same we will do, we will analyze the server priority and everything. Once that is defined in our Excel, we will try to do a Azure assessment, uh, Azure Migrate assessment tool, which is uh, present in, which is actually a part of native Azure Migrate uh, tool. We will uh, without agent based or agent less. If it's if you will do agent based, we will get a, a complete idea about what port and what server is talking to which servers and everything. So if if a customer says I don't want to install an agent, what we will do? We can do an agent list, which will help us to provide uh, a brief idea about if that server need to migrate to Azure, in what sizes it should be best in Azure. So first we will go go with that size only. And later on, after two or three months, we can plan for uh, right sizing of that particular. In that way, also we can save the cost. Okay. 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 Got it. So, just last question on this Azure migrations thing. So, as I said, you know, you generally do the lift and shift. So, when you yeah. have a large number of servers, do so generally you prefer only to lift and shift, at, or do you prefer or plan in case of any opportunity where you can, you know, re re you know redesign some of the applications, some of the servers based on the discussion with the apps owner. So do you take that consideration into your planning or, you know, you just move it and then probably, you know, we just, just redesign once you move the server. Yeah. What is your approach in that case? Yeah, so that totally depend on the uh, criticality of the application. If the criticality of the application is too high, we should not re-architect first. We should migrate it to other and then we try to re-architect that. OK, if the critical is cr criticality is low and customer is agreeing that don't migrate on us, you can migrate this web server directly on the pass. We will we, we can think of and redesign the infrastructure, uh, re re redesign the basically the application. OK, so you mean to say generally we'll first do a left lift and shift and then once the server is there on the Azure, then you plan yeah. to redesign or re-architect. Yeah, because I don't want to break the application, right? So that would be my approach. I might be wrong, but yeah, it could be the way I should do. OK, OK, good, good. Now tell me what is the difference between the VNet pairing and the site to site VPN connection? OK, so uh, when you do site to site VPN connection, it's it's between Azure and it could be your on premise or it could be on other cloud basically. And when you do VNet pairing, VNet is VNet pairing is between Azure. Azure, uh, for an example, same uh, different subscription to VNet or two VNet in the same subscription or two VNet in the different region. If the environment is same, we can do VNet pairing. If environment is different, like there are different cloud providers, then we need to choose a site to site. Or if the infrastructure is on-premise, then we need to uh, connect the infrastructure via uh, Azure, then we can use uh, site to site. So VPN pairing is uh, used if the cloud is same for cloud provider is same uh, VNet pairing and site to site is used when there is a provider could be different or we need to connect your on premise to other. OK, so when you say a provider is same, which means that even if I have so within the tenant or within the subscriptions, we can do a pairing. 
but can we do a pairing between the one Azure tenant to a different Azure tenant altogether? Yep, we can do that. Okay, and how that communication will happen? Over the VPN or how it goes? No, no. It, it would be Azure backbone. If we do VLAN pairing, it would be a total Azure backbone. Because if you look in 2019, cross tenant pairing was allowed by Microsoft. Before that, it was not allowed. But now cross tenant pairing is also allowed by Microsoft. Okay, great. Have you worked on uh, application gateway? Yes, yes, I have worked on application gateway. Okay, so what is the difference between a load balancer and the application gateway? And if you can just give us, you know, like what are the types of application gateway we have in the Azure? Okay, so uh, basically, uh, application gateway is also considered as load balancer. So in Azure, we will we can find three type of load balancers. Um, uh, one is a simple load balancer and another is Azure application gateway and third is traffic manager. So when you want to basically uh, when you, for an example, if your application requirement is to load balance between two servers, OK, you can use the load balancer. But if, if the application has like multiple pages, for an example, if I will give you Amazon.com, you just don't need to load balance the Amazon.com, but you need to load balance the pages between Amazon.com, like slash images, slash uh, videos, because in Amazon.com is a huge website and it's, it might have multiple servers for slash images. It have multiple servers for prime video. So for that purpose, we can uh, uh, use application gateway. So basically application gateway is a layer seven load balancer and uh, uh, as a load balancer is a layer four load balancer. And in application gateway, we have a standard uh, application gateway and with web and web, web v2. Yeah, there are uh, different types. Okay. Am I audible? Uh, I think so, Petter, you are on mute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I am able to hear you. Okay, so let's consider a scenario where we have a hub and spoke model, you know, a design or you know, uh, architecture with in the Azure, and which okay. have the connectivity back to the you know the on-premises network. Okay, so we have the express route connectivity between the on-premises and the Azure cloud. Okay. Okay. So in case if my express route is down, okay, mm -hmm. so so. How you do you know fix and what is your approach to you know to first find out the root cause and then you know troubleshoot and then fix it? Yeah, so uh, so first I will try to fix the issue. Basically, if that it's an express route down in that particular region and it could be a Microsoft issue, then I would uh, I would first if I don't have a site to site as a secondary connectivity for that express route. So what I would first step would be to connect that particular site to a, uh, a nearest region, okay? With the nearest region express route gateway, I will just create an authorization key in another express route, and I will create a connection in this gateway, and I will, I will, I will make sure that our application should start working, and later on I can troubleshoot with that express route with Microsoft as well, or if it is solved, then we can go ahead with uh, Microsoft and uh, find out the root cause for that particular solution. And if the issue is not with Microsoft, and there is because of some misconfiguration has happened from our side. The first step would be to let up the infrastructure and try to research the issue later on. Okay. And once we found out the issue, we can go ahead with the root cause why it was happened and uh, for what reason it was happened, uh, for what uh, activity or something related to uh, which caused the downtime. That would be my approach. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, can, I, can I bring water, please? Yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. Go ahead. I'm a little bit nervous. Okay. Yeah, yeah. no issues. Yeah. Uh, so going ahead, like, uh, so since as you talk about, you know, the on-premises and, you know, the cloud connectivity. So let's say consider we have a firewall on the on-premises. Can that be leveraged for the Azure services? Uh, Firewall for on-premise, right? 
Yes, let's say we have a firewall on the on premises. Can I leverage the same firewall for our cloud resources? Yeah, you can leverage it. The connectivity is already there. You can leverage that firewall, but the problem would be the communication would go via firewall. So for an example, if, if you are leveraging between Azure only, for an example, there are two resources within Azure in the different region. For an example, East US and West US and they want to talk with each other and you place a firewall which is on premise so that the communication will go via east us to on premise firewall and then come to again to Azure, and it would be like that so we can definitely utilize that but it would be a, a long route okay <clears throat> so let's say consider you know we have a, a public a subscriptions you know mm -hmm. where i want to uh, deploy a vm and uh, you know i want to access that vm over the internet and i don't want to enable the port 3389 i know for that vm so what is your su suggestion or what what is your approach to secure that vm uh, over public subscription so that you know the end user can rdp over a secure port and should not be exposed over to the internet for any any you know any attack or anything so uh, there is a service called bastion host where you can use bastion host bastion host is an Azure service which can able to connect Azure in the uh, your VM in the backend. So people will connect to HTTPS portal.azure.com and they will go to Bastion service and they will connect uh, your server via Bastion host. So they will not directly uh, connect from their PC, but they will connect to secure port 443. And if you don't want to install Bastion, there is another way, but it could be a less secure way that you can place a load balancer uh, and you can assign a public IP to load balancer and you can redirect the port uh, from your uh, from the, to the load balancer for example you can connect rdp on port 222 and in the back end it will connect to 3389 it is like inbound port redirection you can do that as well but the preferred way would be uh, go via bastion host okay so have you designed any or have you you know <clears throat> worked on any dr uh, yeah so DR, yes. disaster recovery or have you designed any disaster recovery or any applications hosted on the cloud and if then what are the resources you have used and you know to make that applications highly available in case of anything goes wrong okay so uh, so basically i have designed the three way approach uh, first approach is like your backup okay uh, your backup your backup provide your crr right geo redundant availability so if the application have a high RTO and RPO, okay. So actually I, I don't, I mistake every time the recovery time objective and recovery point objective explanation. But the idea is uh, if you want, if you have a high RPO and RTO, so what we can keep, uh, we can start with uh, a backup and uh, there would be a CR across region restored enabled and you should take a backup of, uh, uh, backup of a server in a recovery service world, which is GIS. So in case of issue, uh, in case of site down, we have at least a redundant copy over there. So this is the first step. Another would be uh, a, with ARS. Uh, okay. So in uh, Azure application service, basically you can use ASR, Azure uh, site recovery basically. So you can implement for every server, you can enable a ASR. So it will copy the disk in your uh, pad region. So it will continuously copy the disk in a pad region. So it would be a passive active and passive DR in case of any downtime we can uh, spin up we can uh, migrate that uh, uh, serv service from uh, primary to secondary and we can update this it would be active passive another would be a cluster based solution okay for an example if it's a SQL we can deploy a cluster Microsoft cluster which is highly available uh, active active site uh, for both the region and you can place a load balancer uh, or a traffic manager in front of them so it, it could be highly available for dns based routing as well yeah. okay good so i think more or less I'm, I'm i'm done but you know before before ending this conversation you know i just going through your profile and i found one interesting things about you know the the things which you have mentioned on your profile like i'm a deep thinker passionate learner hardcore techie awesome trainer storyteller i love technology okay. still finding my purpose so who okay. I am, why I am here, for what reason I'm here, and till what time I'm here. So have you find your reason? No, still searching, still searching for it. 
Okay. Next talk. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. So thanks, thanks, Mila. Thanks, uh, you know, for your time. It was nice talking to you. And uh, you know, as I said, you know, it, it's a good, good, good conversation. And I'll I'll share feedback to the respective team, and hopefully they will get back to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah. Take care. Have a good day, Adia. Bye bye. So this was our interview with Patra Jones. Oh, sorry, Patra Jones. कैसा लगा आपको ये बताइए और आपको next कौन सा interview चाहिए ये भी आप मुझे comment से बता दीजिए और इसमें क्या गलती थी और मेरे पास question list है वो भी मैं update कर दूँगा ताकि ये थोड़ा सा interview fun बनाना था या आपको ये बताना था कि भाई वो questions जो देते हैं उसके answer भी क्या है other questions के answer भी क्या है so I hope you have enjoyed this interview हम मिलेंगे दूसरे interview तब तक के लिए I hope the session was informative and you enjoyed the session.